Um, <laughs> Reincarnated. I'm a stargazing. Life goes on. I need to hug my babies. Yeah, yeah. Woke up looking for the broccoli. High key. Keep a horn on me. That could my seat. What's up guys today I'm going to go through how I created this short edit and all of the effects and editing techniques that I used. So starting off with the audio and trying to edit to match the beat. A little tip that I like to do is to add markers to the audio track. So if we go over here make the timeline nice and big so we can see the peaks in the audio and on these peaks on the audio what we can do is select it and press M on the keyboard and this will create this little marker here. So now we know where to cut the video. So I'm just going to go through the audio track and just add some markers on these peaks here. And then once we've added the peaks, you also want to make sure that snapping is turned on. So over here, there's this little icon and this will snap the video clip in place on the markers. So for example, if I drag this video clip over and then cut it down, you can see it snaps to the marker. So this just makes it easier to line the video clips up and edit to the beats of the soundtrack. So the first thing I do for an edit like this is the speed ramping and stabilization. And on this video, I used the lock on stabilization effect. So for this video clip, I did a nice circling motion around the light here, keeping the light in the middle. And the first thing I'm going to do is select the video clip, go to the little speed wheel here, and then click on automatic speed and then click the speed wheel again and go to video quality, optical flow. Once we've enabled that, now we can add the stabilization. So over here in the effects tab, I'm gonna go down to the Pixel Film Studio stabilizer. And this is the plugin I was talking about. I'll leave it linked in the description. I'm gonna add that onto my video clip. And then up here in the effect parameters, I'm going to click stabilize on and off and then go to the track editor. So in here, we have this red box and I'm going to stick that to the point that I want to focus on right there and then click on the arrow key here and that will track the motion. Now we can click export data and confirm, close that down. Now we have the light as the center point and I'm just going to go to the middle and move this so that we don't get these mirrored edges. Now that's stabilized, I'm going to right click on the video and go to new compound clip. Now from here, we can retime the video clip to fit on this first portion of the audio. And for this effect, I want to create like a boomerang rewind speed ramp. So I'm going to go to the end of the video clip, hold down shift and press B and just speed up the first half of this video clip and drag these tabs out. So the first one starts at the beginning and then this one around about here. And I'm just going to chop the end off of this. And then let's copy and paste this video clip. So hold down option and click and drag. And then on this one, I want to reverse it. So I need to right click, go to new compound clip and then hit the speed wheel over here and go to reverse clip. So now we have that video going back and forward. If I go to my titles tab over here and go down to motion blur, I can add some motion blur onto this, onto the sped up part and it will add some motion blur and smooth out the video. Unfortunately, motion blur doesn't work on reversed video clips. So if you wanted to add motion blur to the other side, you just need to go into the compound clip and add motion blur over it like that. So then it will add the motion blur. So next we're going to have a look at this fly in transition. So here's my first video clip to my second video clip. So the first thing I'm going to do is copy and paste this video clip. And on the first frame, I'm going to hold down shift and press H. This will create this freeze frame and then I can drag it back over the first video clip and just bring it back one or two seconds. And then right here, hold down option and then right bracket. So next we can go to the effects tab over here and go to mask and keying and just add the draw mask onto this. And then let's zoom in and, and just click and start drawing around the outline of your subject. And then we can select all of these points and just right click and then click smooth. Now we can animate this. First of all, I'm going to go to the last frame and hit the transform tool over here and then just hit a keyframe on the last frame. So we know that it's going to end up in that position and then let's drag it back. And if we drag it off the screen, so now it just comes straight up here. But if we go to these keyframes and hold down command 
and click and drag, then we can add, then we can extend these curves here to change how it comes onto the screen. And then I'm going to add one to this too. So if I play that back, now it sort of hops onto the screen. We can also go to the keyframes over here. And at the start, I'm going to add some rotation to this. And then we can also add some motion blur onto this. And then just select them both and turn it into a compound clip. Next, I'm going to add a shake effect to this as the new video clip pops onto the screen. So I'm going to go to my titles tab and bring in an adjustment layer. Adjustment layers don't come with Final Cut Pro, but it's a free plugin you can download. I'll leave the link to it in the description. And on this adjustment layer, I'm going to add a shake effect just to give this transition a bit of impact. So over here in my effects tab, I'm gonna go down to shake presets and use the bounce effect on this. So that adds this nice shake effect and we can always speed up and change the settings over here. So many different settings that you can really fine tweak this shake effect. So if you want to, to make it quicker, then we just go to the, the length. So the vertical shake length, and that will just speed up the shake a little bit. So now we have this really cool transition where the subject flies onto the screen and lands into the next video clip. So now moving on to this next effect. So to do this one, first I need to copy and paste the video clip. Now I need to mask out the part that I want to add this effect to. For this, I'm going to use the Mroto AI effect. And if you're doing advanced effects like this, then I would highly recommend getting this plugin. I'll leave the link to it in the description. It just speeds up adding masks and it just means you can add advanced effects really quickly. So I'm just going to paint on part of the video clip that I want to add a mask and then hit the tracker button and just track this. And you can see how it just tracks the mask all the way through really easily. Then over here in the parameters, go to output and select mask video. So now we just have this masked out without the background. Now on this video clip, I'm going to add a few different effects. The first effect I'm going to add is this replicator effect. I'll leave this link down in the description. It doesn't come with Final Cut Pro, but it's a really cool effect pack. So I'm going to add the XY replicator and then we can change the settings and change the amount of copies that it creates. And the effect is already pre-animated. So if I play this back, you'll see splits the subject into three different copies. And then at the end of the video clip, they both go back to the center. So now I can add a few different effects. I'm going to add the outline effect. This neon color shift one is one of my favorites. And on this effect, what I did was turn down the background opacity to create like these hologram looking effects. And then I also added the pixel scan effect onto this and I just dragged the pixel scan effect up above the neon effect in the parameters just because it changes the way it affects the video and then finally copy and pasted that video clip and on the top layer I just deleted all of the effects so that we have the original video clip so now we have something like this moving on to this next effect we create like this duplicate effect the first thing I'm going to do is copy and paste the video clip. <laughs> and on this one, I need to mask out the car. So let's add the M Roto AI effect onto this. And just paint around the car again. And then just track the mask. So once we have it tracked, let's click on the output mask video. So now we're just left with the subject and no background. So now on this video clip, I'm going to go to my effects tab and go down to the replicator effect. And for this one, I'm going to use the Russian doll preset and just drag that onto the video clip. And this is already pre-animated. So it already creates the animation. And over in the settings, we have the angle amount and also the lift amount. And if we click reverse stacking, it changes the order of the effect. Some of these parameters won't do anything depending on which preset you use. So on the points, we can change how many duplicates it has. Moving on to this next effect, 
we have this like glowing streaking effect. Let's first copy and paste the video clip like we did before. And just mask out the part that you want to add this effect to. For this effect, I'm going to add the pixel sorting effect. And I think the one I used was the vertical glitch. Let's drag that onto the video clip and you'll see how this like stretches out the pixels. And then I'm also going to add the outline effect and go to the background opacity on this and just get rid of the background. So we're just left with this kind of like glowing stretched effect. And then all I did was keyframe the mix at the start so that it faded on. So I'm going to start the mix at zero. And as we go through, it goes up to 100 just by adding a keyframe. This will give it a nice, give the effect a nice blend into the video. Moving on to this final effect where we have the car badge coming out with the glowing outline effect. The first thing I did was copy and pasted the video clip and then add the mRoto AI effect. And I just masked out the badge and then track that. This video is quite tricky to mask out. It took a long time to get it nice and clean. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to do the quick mask. Next, I added the replicator effect and I added the XY replicator onto this and just change the settings so that they ended up coming out like that. And then for the outline effect, I used the mask low effect plugin and the energy preset. I'm also going to drag this preset up above the replicator effect. So now we have the outline effect added. Once all my effects are added, I usually add RSMB motion blur. So if I go to my effects tab and go to revision effects, I use RSMB because it smooths out effects really nicely, just makes everything look a little bit better. All the links to the plugins that I'm using will be in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Reincarnated, I'm a stargazing. Life goes on, I need all my babies. Woke up, looking for the broccoli. High key, keep a horn on me, that come my seat. High peak on the